So as I said in a video yesterday, I have been really looking forward to the new GT3R on the iRacing platform. And of course, I want to take every opportunity that I can get to drive the car and get some seat time, get some competition, see how it handles in traffic, etc. So the guys at Matrix Motorsports, a collection of guys uh, in PCA Sim Racing, decided to host a launch party. I love parties. So I decided that I'd go on ahead and uh, join. So I've made time this afternoon to uh, go out and uh, see what I can do. We're at Laguna Seca, which is one of my favorite tracks. And uh, I think that it's going to be a good combo for this car. So let's see if I'm right and uh, check out the action and enjoy the ride. Definitely like and subscribe the video. Um, if, if you like what you see, um, liking definitely helps the algorithm, helps other people find the video if they... Um, uh, have like interests to yours, they'll be pointed in the direction of the video. And then if you want to be notified uh, of videos when I launch them, because sometimes it's random nowadays, and I know that because I'm not participating in the PCA Sim Racing Series 6, so I'm videoing as opportunity arises, uh, go ahead and subscribe and you'll get notified when I post a new video. Um, and if you don't want to do that, that's fine too, but do appreciate that. Uh, also comment um, on the video as well. Um, if you would, uh, would like to just leave me a comment, um, hopefully it's a nice comment. I do moderate the comments. They don't post immediately. Um, but uh, if you see something you just want to comment on that you like, that you dislike, feel free. I like the discourse and uh, we'll enjoy the conversation, I'm sure. So let's do it. Okay, time to qualify, see how we do here. But track's clear, push, push, push. Okay, Jet, we've got three laps. Let's get this done. Black flag, we'll need to come into the pits to serve the penalty. That's not the way to start. Okay, now really, let's see how we can qualify. All clear, push now. I love this track, because I've driven it in real life. And it's a lot of fun. Tires aren't quite sticky yet. <laughs>
position. Temp is 70 Fahrenheit. The air temp is 66 Fahrenheit. Follow the pace car in the right column. Okay, Chip, here we go. Green, green, green. Sorry. Sorry, I thought that was my fault. Turn 11.
Okay, Jim, double chances here. Let's make sure we can take them. Mm, you're sorry in the lead. about that. Very, very good. is reeling you in. The gap's now 0.45. Sector 2 is 0 0.6 off the pace.
Easy to do. Indeed. That was a great run while it lasted, though. That was fun. Both of the left. Thanks. Yes. Ten minute race. Captain Martin ahead is now 2.2 seconds. Hello, um... You're two tenths off the pace in sector one. Check, we're on the same lap. You don't need to let me die. Notice, Ken. Jack is just a flight. We fight over who's going to let who go by. That's half distance. Fuel levels are fine.
to Martin ahead is now 3.0 seconds. Six. Come on, Chip. One more lap. Keep it together. We'll win this. Your lap times have gone to crap. Come on, sort it out. Well done Chip, great win, you deserved that today. Speed limit, pit lane speed limit is 35 miles per hour. Pit box in 1,010 feet. Pit 
Follow car number 21. Starting from the pit to not wreck you guys again. Let's get this right. No fuck ups. Go. Nail it. Incident in turn 11. Sorry, that's it. There's an incident in turn one. There's an incident in the Andretti hairpin. It looks like freak. Sorry, Chip. No worries, man. There's an incident in turn four. These are all still under warranty, right? Time to call Mako! We think P5 has binned it in the corkscrew. Yellow flag. has been dead in turn 10. Go ahead and pass. Get a traffic up with you. That's right. That custom livery goes fast, Chip. What was that? That custom livery goes faster than these default ones, I think. B5. I feel like I showed up at a dress-up party in my school uniform. <laughs> oh. I think P4's gone off in turn 11.
I'm coming for you, Volker. Like P2's gone off in the corpse crew. Go ahead, Chip. Thank you, Walker. Come on, Chip. Nicely done. Phone is straight. If you be close, I'll let you pass.
gap to Martin behind is now 5.2 seconds. Incident in Corkscrew. There's an incident in turn six. It looks like Martin. Flag. Keep your wits about you, mate. There's an incident in turn six. Looks like it's Ramirez. Turn three. Seem to be slowing down a little. There's an incident in turn four. Way past turn left. Yeehaw. <laughs> I did not think I'd get the repeat on that, I have to admit. Drag race for the line zone. Well done. Has it in. Oh my gosh, that was so much fun. That was, uh, those last few laps were the, my best few laps ever. Thank you, that was a blast. Yeah, that was good. Cool. Light up on, everyone. I really like this car. Thank you for putting this on, guys. This was incredible.
Maintain speed limit is 35 miles per hour. There's an incident in the Andretti hairpin. We think it might be Martin. Now, good thing I read the fire for 15 bucks. 300 feet. Uh, considerably more. 100 feet. So oh, is the the race is it is final? Like it only? Yeah, you guys are done. We didn't go 15 laps this time. So that was really really fun. I enjoyed every last minute of that. Some of it was a little bit harrowing and uh, terrifying, but it was a lot of fun. As anticipated, this car was amazing on this track. Um, I'm pretty sure this car is going to be pretty amazing anywhere. We were driving the baseline setup tonight and um so um we couldn't make any i i don't think we can make any modifications i i i heard rumor that maybe there was a capability of people being able to edit the setup and i don't know if anybody did i did not i didn't change anything i just drove the baseline as i got it and um drove this track really really well um, this is a very driver friendly car um it's not very intimidating um as some of the other cars are in the porsche lineup and iRacing. like the cup car is is a very difficult car to drive um it's a great car for beginners to drive simply because you have to um control the car you have to break your bad habits because it punishes bad habits if you try to overdrive it um if you're too hard on the throttle you're too hard on the brake and you know, all sorts of things and it really trains you to do the right thing so i do advocate for people once they get their sea legs to to try to get good at the cup car because it will pay dividends in terms of how you drive longer term that all being said um, sometimes it's just about getting out and having fun. And, you know, the, uh, I think the Cayman was expected to be kind of that car is it, you know, it's a little bit lower on the power. It's a momentum car, much like the Mazda is for entry rookies and iRacing. So I think a lot of people expected that the Cayman would be a great fun car that people would enjoy. It wouldn't be very intimidating, but for whatever reason, that car is just not fun to drive. At least it isn't for me. Um, and so I struggled quite a bit. I, I love the RSR. Um, for what it is. Um, I enjoy racing it. I enjoy driving it. And of course, uh, Rob Cottle and I are doing the team driving um, in the PCA Sim Racing Series. That's the only official series that I'm currently participating in. And uh, we love driving that car. But it's it's also, it's, um, I don't want to say it's not fun to drive because it is. It just, it lacks a certain amount of personality. Um, once you kind of figured out, it's very mechanical. You do the right things and step by step. And, you know, if you make a mistake, it's usually costing you pretty significantly. And there's not a lot of forgiveness in the car. You can't build a relationship with it and thank it for helping you through a bad situation. So it's a, it's, it's in its own right, a difficult car to drive as well. So, so I was, I was hoping the GT3 was going to be what it is in the real world, which is an accessible car that you know, if you have, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars in your pocket, you can buy a race car that's ready-made and is really built to be driven by, well, it's driven by great drivers. So don't get me wrong on this, but it's also, it's meant to be an accessible platform. And, um, so it's got some forgiveness in it. It's predictable in how it behaves and it's consistent in that predictability. And that's hard to do in a race car. Um, I, I've heard a lot of people kind of talking about this car in, in terms of, you know, what it does and what it doesn't do. It doesn't feel good and it doesn't, it's not as fun to drive as this, that or the other. But at the end of the day, this is a brilliant car for its accessibility. And if you know how to drive a Porsche well, it it just comes together and it just feels so good. I can't even begin to describe it. Although if you're not already driving the GT3 R Ice, really, really encourage you to give it a go. If you're at all enthralled in the racing scene, if you have a, a, a setup to be able to drive uh, in sim racing, um, give this a go because it's, even if you've had a bad experience previously, this car is a lot of fun. Um, all things being equal, um, I, I, I did well today. It was funny. Joe Stiffel, um, who is a PCA Pro class driver, came into the practice session early and turned some laps. Um, and uh, um, he eventually exited to not compete with us because he's uh, a class up from where, or two classes up from where the competition was in this particular race are supposed to be. But he put in 11 laps or so and uh, put in the fastest time in the practice, which was a 122.705, um, I was second fastest uh, behind him uh, with a 123.369, um, and so felt pretty good um, after practice uh, going into qualifying, going to the race, which turns out that was not just ego talking. I was actually able to um, do okay in terms of qualifying. I threw down on 123.266. 
um, it got pole position um, by a, a, a pretty decent margin, not quite a half a second, and um, then um, went on to race in heat one from the pole position. I made a mistake, um, as you saw, um, had a little bit of an off, but again, the car is very forgiving. So all I had to do is remember the fundamentals. Don't jerk the car back across the track. Um, let it ride it out, get your tires back in under you and keep going. And it, it did exactly what I expected it to do in exactly the manner I expected to do. So even though I made a mistake, I only lost one position. Of course, John Martin later um, had an incident of his own in turn 11 and spun out and I recaptured the first place and then never gave it up. So that was great. Great first race. I felt, okay, great. I qualified well. I finished well. But the second race, which was a feature race, the grid was inverted, right? So first place finisher starts at the very, very back. The last place finisher starts in pole position. So everything's flip-flopped. And I, I'm starting this race. I'm all like, okay, I'll be lucky if I make it through halfway through the pack. I'm not really um, known for my racecraft. I'm timid in terms of passing folks and uh, just didn't really have great expectations coming into this race. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to have fun and, and uh, drive my race and try to stay out of trouble. And that was really the key, as you, you saw um, by the end of the fourth lap, um, or actually into the fifth lap, um, I was man managed to work my way back up through the field and um, recaptured the lead of the race and uh, finished with the fastest time of that race, a 124-138, and um, won the race, an 11-lap race. So um, had a lot of fun. Um, raced against some folks that I've had really good experiences races, racing against recently. Um, John Martin, Ken Tubman, Volker Krebs um, are all guys that I have either practiced with or have uh, had close competition with in recent team racing series. So uh, it was really a lot of fun to see those guys again and race against them and have, have a great deal of fun. John um, and I had a, a little bit of uh, conversation after via Discord about um, th the fact that he was, you know, reeling me in uh, and, you know, trying trying to catch me in that second race. Um, and of course, I had I was bead locked on Volker, but in the process of trying to hunt me down, he made a slight mistake and, and fell back a little bit further behind. John did, and um, I caught Volker and uh, was able to 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 do what I intended to do. So anyway, a lot of fun, just tremendous amount of fun, and just tremendous amount of racecraft. And uh, the, the 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 folks in this league are bar none, some of the nicest people I've ever encountered in any walk of life. But it's nice when you get on track with people and you you know if somebody makes a mistake, it's not going to be a big deal. Somebody's going to always make a mistake. That's inevitable. But the hallmark of this league is the fact that people own their mistakes and are willing to have conversations about how to improve down the road. And um, the thing that's great is everybody does. Everybody gets better. Um, there are people that have struggled and wind up, you know, just driving really good races now um, because they've continued to put in the time and the effort to get better and to listen to input and feedback from other people, which is is key. And that's um, that's that's really really a tremendous amount of fun. So this league is great. Um, uh, in 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 that respect alone, um, let alone the fact that we're, we're driving some really fun cars and a really great platform. It's a lot of fun too. Anyway, um, I'm going to stop blathering now. I thank you very much for coming along for the ride and for witnessing what I believe are my first two official victories in unofficial league races. I, I, I kind of laughed uh, after I finished the races. I seem to be able to shine best when it doesn't matter. <laughs> of course, this is just a fun event. Did not have a full representation of all the best and brightest, although there were some really great folks. I mentioned John and, and Ken. They are at the top of the field, uh, at, at least in the top 10 of most of the sport races um, currently in Series 6. So um, that's good company to be keeping. Um, so proud of that. Um, hope that I get an opportunity to see more of the guys out on track for the Wild West Zone Summer Interim Series that is going to be starting up in July. After Series 6 wraps up, we're going to give it a little bit of a heartbeat breath, and then we're going to have an 8-series race that's sponsored by the Wild West Zones that will um, occupy July and August um, on Friday nights. And uh, races are going to be starting at 6 p.m. Pacific, which is, of course, 9 p.m. Eastern. We're hoping that because it's Friday, 
um, and, and people don't usually go to bed early. We're going to get some East Coast participation as well and have a really, really fun series. We've got some exciting tracks lined up that will be announced shortly, and um, it will be a fun series um, in much the same way I think that this was a fun race, is it was a lot less uh, high stakes, more low key, and just fun conversation. People enjoying one another and enjoying the racing, which was really what it's all about. Anyway, thank you so much for joining, and uh, keep, a, keep a watch for, for more videos. They're coming. Like or subscribe. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>